Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays for your weekly Dyson Sphere program update. And the big, big exciting news for this episode is that I've finally managed to build up a, um, a logistics tower here. This thing, over, this big thing over here, what's it called? An interstellar logistics station. And this is basically a big tower that these uh, spaceships around the edge can take off and land from. And they essentially will then fly out. There's one of them there. In fact, it's just coming into land, so let's watch it come into land. Oh no, so there's, there's one going. So yeah, they blast off from the tower like that. And those will fly out from here, fr from where, from my um, my base on, on uh, Alifa 2. They will then fly out, as you can see, all the way across here to Alifa 3. Um, and they'll dock on this planet in much the same way. And that from there, they can pick up some of the, uh, the titanium or the uh, silicon that I've been creating. <clears throat> so if we have a look back down on here on, on the original planet, Alifa 2, I can have a look in this thing, and we can see here that we have currently have 5,380 titanium and 5,400 um, silicon in storage, and then the blue bits here are showing how much of it is currently on its way. And each, each of my little spaceship things carries, I think, 200, um, and currently five of them are in use, so yeah, that does add up, those numbers work quite sensibly. Um, and they'll fly back and forth between here and the other planet, carrying the uh, carrying the resources back that I, that I need over here. So that saved me from having to go back and forth out there manually um, with with the robot flying out there, grabbing them and then bringing them back here uh, by hand. So this is much much better. We've got some automation going, so I approve of that. So that then from the, from here, you, they, it works a bit like the uh, the mining drills do, in that you've got um, spaces around the edge where uh, belts can come out, and you can set up filters on the belts as well, which is quite nice. So you can tell it what you which particular resources you want to come out of each each um, each place, and each one of these can deal with five different resources. Um, and I think you put, I've put the spaceships into here, and I think they then will go it will then go off to anywhere that's supplying those resources and bring them in. So if I had another space station somewhere that was supplying I don't know, unobtainium, then they'd fly, then I'd be able to have that coming into here as well. Maybe in the future I'll have a big off off planet um, iron mine and uh, and um, <clears throat> and copper mine as well, because if there isn't enough here, something like that sort of thing. So with that, I've been able to have a belt bring the titanium out like that, and and the um, and the the uh, silicon as well to put them onto the main bus over there, which is getting wider and wider and longer and longer each time I play. And I've also got a second belt coming out here to feed in over here, where the titanium yeah, where the titanium crystals are being made, because I didn't want to run I didn't want to run the buff, the base off the same belt that was feeding in here in case these suddenly started to use a lot of resources, uh, which they generally do because this is where all of my yellow science is coming from. And also, I didn't want to do it the other way around. I didn't really want to run the run it all the way over here, just bring it around and bring it back up again. So, that, so having a second belt coming out of here, especially as this is quite so close, seemed like a good idea to me. So I've done that. In order to get this up and running, I need to do a fair amount of building over here. So, um, I left at the end of the at the end of the last video. I got to the point where I think I was, I was making the, um, the 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 electronic components here and these and the processors. So those were going fine. I'd made like five of them before I ran out of silicon. So I then had to go. I did have to go off and do another manual run out to the other planet to grab the resources and bring them back in the in the in the mech's inventory. So in in here. Um, but then from there, I was then able to, once I got, got a decent supply of it, I was then able to start thinking about actually upgrading things properly. So I was then, I was then able to build the, uh, the, the what, I'm, what I'm thinking of as the big electric motors, what does it actually call them? Uh, electromagnetic turbines, okay. And these purple particle something or other hot con containers. And from that, with those and a few other th bits and pieces as well, I was able to then finally make the uh, the two different types of logistics tower. So we've got the little ones here that are used for intraplanetary logistics, so bringing things from one place on my planet to another place on the same planet, and then the big ones that you put up like that, and then you can, and you can use to, to fly stuff between planets. I've not actually used any of these yet at all, but I do believe that these big ones can be used as small ones as well, should I feel the need to, but I, I haven't felt the need to. But in order to get that, I did need to do some more, um, what I'm th I can't help thinking of as bioprocessing. Well, actually, no, it's not. So over here, we're starting to make sulfuric acid. So I've, um, I've put in a tap on the, um, on, on, the, on the refined oil that's coming through here, also water and some stone coming in. And that, is, that makes the uh, sulfuric acid that we need. From there, that's being fed onto a belt because it is needed over, over there by at least one of the stages of this system. And also it di being directly fed into this machine here, which is turning the excited, excitable carbon, what's it actually called? Energetic graphite into carbon nanotubes or, or graphene sheets, which are then, well, there again. Once again, they're passed out in these little boxes that go down another belt. And, and once again, I've. <laughs> I find the um, I find the graphics in Dyson Sphere program for a lot of these things a bit 
I don't really like them because it's when you're zoomed out a distance like this, it's too hard to tell things apart because there are so many things that just here is a grey box, here is another grey box, here, here is another grey box, here yeah, so iron, titanium, graphene, uh, stone bricks and probably other things are all just grey boxes and then silicon and glass are both green boxes and they look yes they look different if, they all look different if you look really really closely at them but they look do look very very similar and then a lot of the other stuff it is still everything else is just a box yes it's got a little picture on the top showing you what it is so when you zoom in a bit you, or even when you're zoomed out you can tell you can generally tell what they are and they're and they're nice and colorful as well but they're still all just boxes on the conveyor belt and that's after after what I've seen, seen in Factorio, which is perhaps less realistic because having the things in boxes would keep them a bit more organised, but it just feels a little less pretty and just a little bit less nice, I suppose. So, with all those ingredients, yes, I was able to make the uh, make the, te the towers, as I say, and then I moved on from there to start making the... Oh, and I need to make the this, which is a, a, a titanium alloy, I think? Yes, titanium alloy. So that's steel and titanium and requires acid in the process as well and it makes the titanium alloys which is these sort of three three stacked bars and that was required for these um, and and for the, and then for the thrusters in order to make the spaceships that will fly between planets for me the next thing i made now this is quite exciting um, i haven't got very far with this but what this is is um, these are making little solar sails uh, which i believe are little solar panels that you then use the railgun to fire out into orbit now at the moment the uh, where the, the orbit it's targeting is dipped below the horizon so it's just stopped firing that's why the gun the uh, the, the um, barrel has gone orange rather than yellow and well the gun has stopped firing but if i have a look in the um, in the, the looking out in space mode if i get the zoom level right yes we can see over here there's lots there's all these dots in in an orbit around the sun now and these are all the solar sails that i've created um, and with those i believe i can get i believe they're capable of gathering energy i'm not 100 percent sure how this is supposed to work yet because i haven't actually been able to make it make everything yet because I, I ran out of time stuff happened um but what we've got if we look in the researches we have you can make a, uh, you can make solar sails. Oh no, sorry, it's improving the lifespan of them. Let's have a look over here. <clears throat> you can make where is it? Somewhere in the main main quest line. Here we go. Solar solar sail orbit system. So you can make the solar sails and the gun to launch them. Then you can do the ray receiver, which gives you this satellite dish, which can presumably, which says as it says receives a, a beam from the um, Dyson swarm. So I'm guessing that each of these will essentially fire out its own separate laser beam. Um, which will then all be picked up by the ray receiver. So I put down a ray receiver somewhere, and as long as it's pointing more or less towards the um, towards where the orbits are, presumably they'll beam power over to it. Now, I was a little bit disappointed to see that um, these only produce 6 megawatts of power each, because that isn't a huge amount. Uh, I think my base uses somewhere in the region of 50 at the moment. Let's have a quick look. Uh, power... Yeah, well, generating almost 50, and using about just over 30, probably because some of the base has gone to sleep. But... Point being, six megawatts a pop. That's going to require quite a lot of receivers and obviously a lot of the um, uh, solar sails. Now, I guess I was expecting something like in Factorio Space Exploration, where you get the um, the beam power thing, where you want one receiver can receive basically as many gigawatts as you want it to, as long as you fit it with the infrastructure around it to deal with that power. So. Um, but obviously this is a different game. The rules are going to be different. We're going to have to do things differently. We shall see how it goes, and I shall. Um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll work on it. I'll come up with some sort of cunning system to deal with that. Ooh, I've done a recent research. That's nice. So over here, we're making the um, the prisms and the... What on earth are these? The photon, combina photon combiners in order to make the solar sails. And it turns out that these this this array of machines here is just about is is actually capable of slight feeding slightly more than one em rail ejector so this system i've got i <clears throat> i was expecting this thing to fire them out a bit more quickly and therefore having have an array of these machines set up but it turns out that this seems to be fairly well balanced at least when the time of day is suitable um now why are you sad okay we've got we needed to lift up another eight degrees however i have noticed that the um the, or the planet that's orbiting around here is now currently in the way, so we're probably even after that goes white. Yeah, we're, there's still a, there's still another planet in the way, and this is quite annoying. This has happened. This isn't the first time this has happened, but because the um, because the place I've set up on Alifa Two is actually the uh, a moon around Alifa One, it means that a lot of the time the um, the the, uh, the gas giant planet gets in the way of me launching the uh, the solar sails out into into orbit around the sun, so. And in a moment, in, in a, actually in a minute, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to get past it in, in a moment or two. And I think, I hope, I'm still going to have, 
yeah, probably still going to just about have enough angle to at least get a few launched. But it's a bit of a shame that you can't sort of send them out in onto a different orbit and have them drift in, or perhaps launch them to, from a, a, a to a, send them over to another space station in one of these logistics craft, and then that floats perhaps out in a Lagrange point out here or some, somewhere perhaps, and can always fire into into over there. But never mind, you can't have everything. So if I go back over here now, yeah, it's pointing almost the gun's pointing almost straight up. I can't look straight up because that's well, I just can't. <laughs> the game won't let me. Um, but hopefully, I can't. I can't see the planet overhead. But hopefully, at some point, that we'll we'll have enough clear sky that we can start shooting again. So I wonder. He's got 20 in it. I don't know if I can tell how many are fired. Oh, yeah, fired 206 in total. Um, I don't know if that's how many it's fired or how many have just gone up. And I also can't add another orbit in yet. Or maybe I can. Um. Oh, I can. Interesting. So I could put in another orbit like... Like... <laughs> I don't know. This is something to play with on stream. But this is something we can do uh, later on and, and, and fit a lot more... And get a lot more solar cells into orbit to get the Dyson Swarm a bit bigger and a bit more effective. Oh, there's another spaceship going. I'm kind of waiting for the... Um, oh, another one coming in. I'm kind of waiting for this gun to start firing again because that's sort of why I'm standing here. Oh, here we go. It's gone blue. Choom! So it will now fire out at a reasonable rate, but the uh, but this machine here is capable of producing them at the same rate. You'll see this is at 19, 20. It's building them as fast as they're being taken away, basically. So we don't have we don't have any problems there, which is almost a pity. But it means I just need more guns. Um, and if we so if we now look out here, you can see the uh, the blue lines from the uh, solar sails being fired out, and eventually they'll make it out into orbit. I don't, well, I can see them. I don't know if you'll be able to see them because I know what YouTube's compression is like, but. Um, yeah, they're all being fired out here, and we've got a nice ring of orange. Um, if I, in fact, if I centre on the on the sun, then we can't see anything at all because the sun's so bright. Yeah, but there's there there is there is a nice ray, array of these or of the um, of them being built up now out here. Oh, here comes one. There we go. And there's another another solar sail there. So these do have a limited lifespan. I don't know how long they last for, but I have noticed that in the upgrades, there are various researches in here that you can do that will make them last for an extra. 300 seconds, 300 seconds, 300 se 600 seconds for that one. So I'm guessing they probably last for about 5 or 10 minutes or so. Something like that. Sh a lot Long enough to be useful, but short enough that this seems like a decent upgrade. And also actually short enough that this is a sensible percentage upgrade like of half to the actual doubling to adding an extra 50% on or something like that of, of the... Um, of, of, the, of the existing life, lifespan. So we'll see. We didn't get very many launched because of the, uh, the planet got in the way. So it seems like every other orbit we get to launch a decent number of them. Which is a bit, which isn't, isn't great. But I'm not actually using any of it yet so I suppose it doesn't really matter. In the last episode I, talk, came, I came over here and I talked a bit about um, about oil production and, and, and keeping things balanced properly. So we had a system before where um, we're taking the the light oil out of the uh, out of the tank here, and it has now nearly all gone, which is a bit of a worry. Um, and turning it all into hydrogen and carbon um, in order to, in order to keep the uh, supply required for the yellow yellow science up and running happily. Now it, it did occur, it had occurred to me, and was pointed out quite a lot in the comments section, that this was going to mean I'd rip through all of the light oil, uh, sorry, the refined oil, and then start to have problems with it because I wouldn't be able to. Um, I would then I wouldn't then be producing enough of it. So what I've done is I've come along here and I've I've set it up so that now if we look at this machine here, I've, I've prioritised this output, the one that goes out into the main part of the base. So what I expect to happen at the point when we start to have shortages, um, which will be in about 320 oils, um, is that all of the oil will go out this way. This this belt will start to empty as it's made into hydrogen. And then the hydrogen will also be taken away, and um, we'll we'll run into and, and it will get to the point where we're having to having to make more um, more. And then, sorry, and then this hydrogen will start to flow through because there'll be a shortage of hydrogen. So these machines will start running again and producing more uh, refined oil. <clears throat> now the problem with this is that it's not going to work. Um, if there was a steady steady demand on everything, then yeah, it would be fine. We'd have uh, it probably would keep itself reasonably well balanced. But if we get to the point where we're using refined oil but not hydrogen, which seems to be the case at the moment because we're making the sulfuric acid and things over there, but we're not actually turn we're not actually we've stopped making the I know we haven't quite stopped making the yellow science, but oh no, it's red science that uses the hydrogen, isn't it? So yeah, the red science is backed up now, so that's stopped. So the hydrogen isn't flowing, so that means this oil is is going to run out quite soon, and then we're going to have some pro and then we're going to have problems, and we're not going to get any oil coming in from anywhere else. So. Are there other ways to make or late make refined oil? I have a feeling there are some other recipes, but I don't really know what they are. So if I look in here, 
Um, let's select a recipe. So what do we got? We've got um, turning. We've got that's the one we've been using: crude oil into refined oil and hydrogen. We've got that one's the other one we've been using. Um, I can't do anything else. Okay, so it's not going to be that. Put that back to doing the original. No. The original recipe, like so. Um, so there we go. There's the last, there's, and that's the last of the refined oils gone out. So now the uh, we are eventually going to run out of oil down here, um, supplying the uh, supplying these buildings. And then at that point, the hydrogen will stop flowing quite as smoothly, and eventually we'll start to produce at least a little bit more oil. In fact, we already have. So if we look down here, we can presumably we can see. Ooh, if I can get the camera in the right place, and I can't because there's a stone belt in the way. Um, no, I'm not, oh, that might just be from the machine I just picked up and uh, re reprogrammed, and it's, it's using up the, um, it's filling its buffers back up again with hydrogen. Okay, so there's there is now a problem here, so I'm going to need to come in, come in here and do something about this. Exactly how I'm going to do that, I haven't decided yet, but I will come up with some sort of solution to fix to, to solve this problem because, as you can see, we've already used up nearly all of the uh, the refined oil that we had buffered because it's all just being turned into. Um, I don't know, plastic over here in order to make make all of the other stuff. So this system is not going to work. I'm going to have to come up with a better way of keeping this balanced. What I did before worked very nicely indeed when I needed lots and lots of hydrogen and basically no refined oil. But now actually if I, if I start doing a research that requires a decent amount of red science and not too much of the other one. So like this one for example, I could do that. That will put a bit of load on the hydrogen produ production. And then we should see that relatively quickly, well, I don't know how, how quickly, but eventually, yeah, this, you can see that this oil is now being used up, but we still have to wait for all of the hydrogen to come out of the buffers in these machines. So there is definitely going to be some problems here. This is going to take some extra thinking and some extra work. So, I, yeah, I'm going to have to do something about that. And I'm currently not quite sure what that's going to be. So, if you have some good ideas, uh, suggest it in the comments. Uh, nothing too spoilery, please, but if there's something really obvious I've missed, then then I'd, yeah, it'd be nice to know about it. <laughs> As it is, I've already got a ridiculous number of belts passing through here. Uh, I'm making take, taking full advantage of the 3D-ishness of the game, but I talked about that quite a lot in the last episode, so I won't go on about it again. Um, otherwise, other than that oil problem, everything else seems to be running reasonably smoothly. The uh, titanium and silicon are being brought, are being mined up and then brought in faster than they're required over here. We've got thousands and thousands over here. I think these were on about four and a half thousand each when I when I looked at the start of the uh, start of this, this episode. So that's going very well. The um, the launch, the the uh, solar sails being launched nicely over there, all being fired off into into space. So that's great. Yeah, things seem to be working. So I think I've. Um, Progress is going well. I'll be uh, doing some more streaming on um, on Wednesday of this. To, to, so they come along, they come along then Wednesday at 7:30 to, to see me uh, tackle the problem of trying to receive the beam power from these things, and then messing around with all of the rest of the research that needs to be done. And we'll we shall see. I mean, I'm sure there'll be lot. There's lots. There's lots of research to do. There's lots of upgrades to do. I know there's more planets you can go off and visit. So I'm sure things are going to get quite a lot harder relatively soon. I do need to research the next science pack at some point. I don't even know where that is. It's going to be some, somewhere in here, though. It's not that one. Um, I don't know. It'll be somewhere somewhere in the research though, the research tree. There's there's one there. That's that makes green science. So maybe that's maybe that's one to work towards. Um, I know there's also purple science some, somewhere though, because I've seen that required for things, and I don't know where that comes from. Oh, maybe it's this one. No, that's white science. Um, that one. Yes, purple size. Ah, oh, okay. So I've basically, I've got it. It's, it's a bit like um, some of the Factorio mods where you have a choice between going for the purple science or the green science next, depending on what sort of things you want to unlock. And I've got most of, well, I've got quite a lot of the stuff that takes brings me towards this one. But then there's fewer requirements for this one. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I shall um, definitely be working on more science packs in the next episode, though, or in the next stream. So come along, see, see how see how things go. Look, go go there. I'll be streaming Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 on Monday, so uh, yes, definitely come along to that one. That's the big popular stream at the moment. It's multiplayer as well, so we've got the um, the excitement of hearing us, hearing us all shouting abuse at each other when we get a belt wrong or something like that. <laughs> Should be good fun. Um, what else is happening? Oh yes, and we, we, well, the stream is now and uh, the server is now sponsored by Treefoil.be. So if you need a gaming server for Factorio or um, Minecraft or lots of other things, then check them out because um, they'll give you you'll, you'll get a discount if you go to uh, treefold.be slash Lawrence Plays and use the code Lawrence Plays on checkout. Um, otherwise, I think that's about all I have to say. But I'm going to sort of now carry on working on some more videos, so there'll be lots of stuff coming out in the future. Hope to see you then. Thanks for watching.